Let's now then take a look at the odds to win, powered by PointsBet Sportsbook. And here are the current odds to win the cup. The United States are the favourites at minus 190. Conversely, the Europeans are nearly 2-1 to one to win the cup. And if you think that it could be a 14-14 to 14 tie, well, you can get plus 1,200 or 12-1 12 to 1 odds that that would happen. So, Paige, you are the betting expert amongst us. Digest all of that and give us your thoughts. Uh, the biggest thing that I'm looking at is just how much the odds have changed. As we've gotten closer to the match, uh, we've seen the odds diverge. And if you were to place bets a year ago, uh, you would actually get less... Uh, value for where Europe was uh, just a year ago in the U.S., of course, you would have gotten a much better deal uh, than where we're facing right now. And as we've gotten closer to the matches, you can see U.S. actually moved all the way to minus 200. Uh, Europe is now at the best possible value, if you're looking at that, at plus 190 that they've sat so far. So just putting it into context of where we have been to where we are, you're looking at the best value for Europe right now. Well, that's interesting. And actually, Nota Begay is going to join us a little bit later on in the program to explain how different the American side, for example, does look this year, given to what it might have been a year ago. But so tell us, who do you like? Do you agree with the odds? Oh, I agree with the odds okay. for certain. Um, but I also am a value player. And at that, I wouldn't be putting money on the U.S. I would be maybe waiting for foursomes through the first day and maybe try to pick up U.S. at a better price or go ahead and flip the coin and, and take Europe right now at the value. David, numbers aside, do you, do you agree <laughs> that the Americans are heavy favorites? <laughs> I think they're favorites. I don't know about heavy favorites. I mean, you know, I do know I don't pay attention to odds. I don't pay attention to all that stuff. But, you know, the one thing they say in gambling is you, is you never bet against a streak. And all streaks come to an end, they also say. <laughs> so I do think the Americans are the favorites. I do think the Americans will probably win this Ryder Cup. Um, uh, but but I, I can't dive, dive into the numbers and all that stuff. I don't really pay attention to it. Let me just ask you one quick question. How much of a role does the captain really have, do you think, on the outcome of his cup? If his players are playing well, does he luck out as a captain? Or is his strategy, do you think, in partly what leads to a, to a win or a loss? The strategy is certainly a part of it because you have to, as the captain, be willing to sit players. You know, if they're not playing well, I mean, if... if say Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth play a couple of matches the first day and are just awful. I mean, you've got to be willing to stand up and, and, and sit them and maybe not send them out both matches on a second day. Or same with uh, Shoffley and, and with uh, Cantley. That you've got to be willing to check the egos at the door, put your, put your personal feelings aside. Even though every player wants to be out there trying to earn a point for their team, uh, as the captain, you've got to be willing to make some changes you have your pairings already, but you've got to be willing to remove uh, pairings and, and, and insert others based off of how they start playing. And it does seem like listening to all the players this week will do what the captain tells us. You Absolutely. Know, they're all know their subordinates, and there is a man in charge. Well, let's now bring in the head trader from Points Bet. That is Jay Croucher. He's on the grounds with us here at Whistling Straits this week. Jay, thanks for being with us today. Let's discuss this pretty unique event then, shall we? And you have priced the United States as a pretty heavy favorite. We've just been discussing that. What goes in? to that pricing considering Europe have won nine of the last 12. So, Cara, I think what we're looking at here is just the gap in talent in the rosters. I think there's the case to be made that the U.S. have eight or nine of the 11 best golfers who are going to be playing uh, at the Ryder Cup. And just over time, like Paige mentioned, the U.S. have shortened and shortened. So we make them very clear favourites. Uh, but minus 190, what that means is that's the same as being a three-and-a-half-point favourite in the NFL. So that's what's the, the Niners are favoured over the Packers on Sunday night. So it's uh, clear favouritism, but it's no luck by any means. The U.S. should win, just like the Niners should win, but Aaron Rodgers is pretty good and, and so is John Rahm. So this isn't a lock. And there's that played on paper versus on grass debate, I suppose, as well. The, the Ryder Cup, we know, is different from nearly every other week um, in betting golf, at least. So how does this format, do you, do you think, factor into pricing versus the rest of the golf season? Can you explain how that differs from your end? So it actually doesn't factor in too much. I mean, these guys, they're still playing golf. But the one area where it might factor in is with the four balls, where that is where, you know, a high-variance player, someone who can have an amazing hole, someone like a Brooks Kepka or a Jordan Spieth, hold a hole, they might not be so consistent, but when you're taking their best ball, that really helps. I know that, you know, a big discussion point with the Ryder Cup is chemistry. We don't factor chemistry into our pricing. You know, we can factor in 
uh, Brooks Kepka's strokes gained off the tee and put that into a pricing model, but we can't put Brooks Kepka's feelings into a pricing model. So that kind of stuff, not saying it doesn't matter, it's just very uncertain. And so what we're dealing with is just the, the pure facts. Uh, so the chemistry element doesn't really play in. OK, good point. Well, then let's continue this. Let's look at the odds now for the top point earner on, on both sides. First, the Europeans, and no surprise, really, that world number one John Rahm is the overwhelming favourite at just better than three to one. Rory, by the way, next on the list at plus 500, followed by, interestingly, Ryder Cup rookie Victor Hovland. Uh, down the list, you see some of the veterans, Sergio Poulter, Westwood, there, all in double-digit odds. Conversely, on the American side, well, it's a much more bunched market, as, as you might expect. Justin Thomas is the favorite at plus 550, meaning a $10 wager would net you 55 bucks. So there you go, go have it. Azanda, Jordan, Patrick Cantley, they're all sitting there at, at plus 700. All in all, eight of the 12 Americans are under double digits, so kind of plays into the trend that we're seeing. As we come back to you, Jay, we see such a difference then between these two markets. The European side is top heavy, of course. Uh, they've only got one player in the top 10, the official world golf ranking, while the Americans are very spread out. Why are the markets built this way? And how did your book decide to put JT actually at the top of the American market? So this is an interesting one where, you know, if all the Americans, if they were just playing a regular PGA Tour tournament at Whistling Straits this weekend, we'd make Patrick Cantlay the favourite uh, over all the other Americans. But what this market is about is not so much about talent as it is about opportunity and who has the chance to play potentially five matches. And we're taking a calculated guess there that Justin Thomas is the most likely to play four or even five matches. Uh, we think that he'll be partnered with Jordan Spieth and then after that, Xander Shoffley and Patrick Cantlay is probably the best bet. And then with the Europeans, it's just all about John Rahm. He anchors every market that he's in. He starts favourite for everything now. We see him, the gap between him and every other golfer in the world is the biggest gap in the sport since peak Tiger Woods. And that's why John Rahm gets the respect uh, on the odds board here. Wow, that's fascinating. OK, Jay, thank you as well. Welcome, uh, Paige and David, back. I mean, Jay makes a great point there, Paige. The more matches you play, the more opportunity you have to, to earn points. Do you agree with how they have priced out the potential top point earners for each team? Uh, for the most part, yes. I think he made great points about the U.S. team as it relates to what we've talked about with Spieth and Thomas and Cantley and Shoffley. But I also think it, it makes me question who else is going to get a lot of opportunity because I think there's value down the board if players like a Scheffler or a Berger get to play, because they're sitting at plus 1,400. Uh, we just don't know how many matches they're going to play. I'm looking at Bryson at plus 800 and also thinking, that seems like really short odds for a player that didn't pick up a point in Paris that we also don't know is going to play for some. So on the U.S. side, uh, I think a lot of it at the top of the board makes a lot of sense. There's a couple potential places for value down the board on the U.S. side. David, do you think entering the week as a captain, you have in mind the players you want to potentially play five sessions and those that you will play less? Or do you kind of wait and see how their form plays out once things start? I believe it. I believe that you have a good idea uh, of the potential of who might play five times and, and and you know we've talked about it already you look at the top the odds for the top four from the american side and that's somebody just said all four are probably going to play five times um so they have those opportunities to, to earn the points um you know but that's where it goes back to what we we're just talking about that you have to have the ability to to kind of change your plan based off of performance and how you're playing if somebody's playing you know crappy you just don't keep sending them out there you know you got to you got to have your vice captains out there talking about how, how they're playing, what's going on, what they're doing, how they're feeling, uh, and, and be willing to make some changes in your plan. Uh, and what has been so impressive to hear this week is all the players have come out and said, I will happily go 0-4 oh and, sure. and the team win the cup. You know, they'll, they'll play one or five, whatever they're, they're asked of. Let's just go back to Jay one more time. Jay, thanks for staying with us. Before you go, I just want to ask about this week then. And once the matches are underway, we obviously see such swings in match play. How aggressive will you be in pricing matches that are in play? And do you expect a lot of your action to potentially come as the matches are unfolding? Definitely. Yeah, now we're seeing more and more in-play activity for golf. I think with the Ryder Cup, it's particularly perfect for in-play because, you know, there's not 140 players in the field. It is a more condensed field. You can have that focus. And in-play golf is, I think golf might be the best in-play betting sport, just the cadences of the sport. There is time to breathe between shots, between moments while markets do update. And the example I always give is, can you imagine betting on Jean Vandervelde at uh, Carnoustie in 1999 on the 18th hole when he's got a three-shot lead? 
and he blows it and you can bet in between each one of those shots whether he's going to blow it or salvage a major and now you can bet on you know the next Jean van der Velde moment and you know hopefully for everyone playing this weekend it doesn't happen to them but it'd be great betting entertainment if it does. What a great example. You heard it here first. The best in-play betting sport we have on the books this week, actually every week here on Golf Channel. Jay, thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure to pick your brain and enjoy your experience here at Whistling Straits.